Right, well here we are at the offices of Music Sales in central London this sunny Monday afternoon talking to Scott Gorham of Thin Lizzy, whose book, The Boys Are Back in Town, you can see it behind us, was recently published by Omnibus Press. Scott's come in this afternoon to talk about the book with me, Chris Charlesworth, Omnibus Press's long-standing editor. <laughs> How are Hello, you? Hello, oh, Scott. Nice <laughs> to see you. Me nice too. to see you. Um, this uh, great book, and it's it's selling it's selling really well. Tell me how um, how did the book come about? How did how did it all start? Well, we uh, it was actually written by uh, a journalist and myself, uh, Harry Doherty, who yeah. used to work with uh, Melody Maker. That's right, my own alma mater. There you go, yeah. way back when. Uh, and we used to take Harry on a lot of the world tours that we did back then. We used to used to fly him out to America or Europe or wherever we were. And he'd come out and just kind of write about the band or he, re we, he would uh, review the gig. And, and he always had the, the kind of side story that went along with it, right? So he was kind of privy to, of watching a band on this, you know, being very low down, and, and he, he saw the actual rise. Right. Of he, he was there at the beginning, and he, he, was. he, he saw you <laughs> rise up through the yeah. ranks, Division One Premiership, he did. He did. as they do it, to use a football analogy there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, he, uh, and so he became good friends with He was. He, he yeah. became good friends with everybody. So uh, it was really easy to uh, open up to uh, Harry uh, at any given point, right? I see, I see. And so did Harry approach you with the idea of, of writing a book about the band? Or? He did. He but did, yeah. that, we're going back about, uh, it was about five years after uh, Philip passed away. He says, you know, we really need to put this down in print. You know, tell the real story about what Thin Lizzy was all yeah. about, how it all happened, you know, the stories behind the pictures and all that. So, and I said, great, you know, and he says, well, I've got a really great start on it. What do you think? And he handed it, handed it to me and I read it. And I realized at the time it was, it was too soon because every, everybody... How that, long ago would that have been? Well, that would, would we're been, talking about uh, 25 years ago. Oh, yeah. Now. So it's taken a long time. So well, well <laughs> and the reason was is everybody that he interviewed, uh, they were so sad at Phil's passing that it, it was like a depressing oh, story see, that I came out. I, I, I see, yeah. Right. yeah. Um, and I said to Harry, I said, we're going to have to put a, a halt to this because, you know, Thin Lizzy was actually a really fun band to be yeah. in. And... But nobody's in the mood to actually tell the fun stories right now. So let's let's throw the anchor out and think about it later at some yeah, point. I see. And that's what we did. And that's what you did. And then what? So what? About a couple of years later, the project was re rejuvenated. Then was it? Uh, it well, took, it, it actually took wrong. twenty years, <laughs> it took 20 years. <laughs> to get it back going again, right? Yeah. Because uh, I, I think we actually finished it maybe yeah. eighteen months ago, something like that. So. So it's, that's, it's, that's it's, right. That's around about the time that we we signed it up for Omnibus exactly, Express. Yeah, exactly. I, I see. So, I, but so it really took that long to uh, to uh, for everybody to get over their uh, depression the of Phil dying. dying. Yeah, mm -hmm. I see. I see. So, so tell me, how, how truthful is the book? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a word of truth in the whole damn thing. <laughs> well, I know rock groups on the road. I mean, you're not the kind of band who went to bed uh, early with a glass of warm milk. No, uh, no, no. I, you? So uh, that it's all uh, pretty true. In fact, I've, Scrabble. You play, played a lot of Scrabble. Uh, yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Pinochle. Yeah, yeah. No, I've had a lot of people ask me why did I uh, reveal so much, and pretty much my answer to that is kind of everybody knows it anyway. <laughs> Yeah. So you might as well put it down in print. Yeah, yeah. How how much input came? I mean, obviously you're you're the co-author with Harry. Mm. Uh, what what sort of input did you get from other members of the band who are still around? Yeah, uh, Harry. Uh, he interviewed everybody. Yeah. Uh, everybody gets a shot in the book. Everybody gets a mention. Uh, you know, uh, Brian Downey, Darren Wharton. Uh, Brian Robertson's, yeah. uh, Gary Moore. I don't. I don't think he got to Gary Moore no, in time. No, the guy got, died as well. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Fairly recently. Yeah. But you know, he, uh, Harry had uh, interviews that he had done with Gary previously to that anyway. I so see, I think he used I some see, of that. I see. I see. Was it easy to remember everything? I mean, <laughs> I was going to say, what are your favorite memories? Uh, well, that you, you know, managed to. It, could it, you remember it? I well, mean, yeah. it, the thing mm -hmm. is, is when you're talking to Harry, because he's got all his notes and he's got a, a, a fabulous memory, uh, he would bring up a subject that oh, you had I totally see. forgotten about, 
and all of a sudden you found the, the, the memories kind of flooding back in and then you're off and away talking about so it. But once you had the nudge then yeah, it, you were but off, it, yeah. It, it took, it, you know, like you say, it took the nudge from Harry to, you know, kind of rekindle the me memories on a lot of this yeah, stuff. Yeah. So. Um, I, I, I still, I mean, what were the highlights of all these memories? That's, that's wow, the, the, the highlights. Well, you see the cover right here now. Oh, we've, we've Sydney. Just been, yeah, yeah, we've yeah. just been to uh, Australia, and uh, I had to go back down there and revisit the Opera House. And I, I don't remember it as being as massive as it is, right? Yeah. But uh, that was a, a, a show that the sort of the mayor and the, uh, all that, they, they let us do the show at the Sydney uh, Opera yeah, House, uh, right? Yeah. Figuring there was probably going to be maybe a couple thousand people, yeah. maximum five thousand, and in fact, what happened is sixty thousand people showed up. Really, was and it a free show? It, it, it was. was a free show. It was a free you show. couldn't really police the, you know. No, the, and, the, and it got the, out of hand. The area, it kind of right? got out of hand. But yeah. I really, what happened was uh, the uh, the mayors and all the city fathers and all that. They said this will never happen again. Yeah. Because if you think about it, uh, the Sydney Opera House is uh, Australia's Taj Mahal. Yes, it is. You know, I know. I've, I've, been, I've been there. It's, it's a very it's iconic. A sacred site. Almost. It absolutely <laughs> is. So they just don't want to take any chances on that ever happening again. Yeah. So uh, they stopped all that. They stopped it, huh? Which is a well, shame because it's that, a great was that, site. Was that really, do you think that was the biggest audience you played to with the band? Oh, no, uh, no. no. We've, people? we've played to 100,000. Well, where would that, with a big festival in America? Yeah, Bank, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can see it. I think. I think it might be in the book, and maybe not. But there's like baseball stadiums and football stadiums that you would play to. Yes, yes, they were absolutely yes. packed out, and they were holding like ninety thousand, yeah. something like that. Okay, so we talk about the highlights. Uh, any regrets? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, I, I, th I even say it in the book. You know, the biggest regret is uh, our whole sort of drug stage. Uh, I really wish we could have kept away from that. Uh, it, if we if we would have, uh, it probably you, you'd be Phil that you're talking to right now instead of me. Yeah. Uh, ultimately. But you weren't alone in that. I mean, it, no drugs just seem to be like a, a a natural disease, if that's what it is, for for all bands on the road in the in the seventies. It's yeah. Well, you know something. There, there weren't enough, uh, <laughs> as I like to say it. Uh, there weren't en enough dead rock stars at that point to scare you <laughs> off. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there wasn't a, 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 enough information to uh, that, that you could read or talk about to people to let you know that this is not really a great path to take. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're going to do yourself a lot of injury here by by doing this. Yeah. So uh, that probably is my biggest regret. Okay. Do you think you're lucky to survive? I do. Yeah. I do, and I think uh, anybody that uh, you know, had been in our situation and, and doing the copious amounts of drugs that we did, are happy to still be walking around. Yeah, yeah. You know? well, I mean, that's, that's not just like a boast, because that's nothing to well, boast about. It's yeah. just kind of a fact. Was there a point where you decided, right, I'm knocking this on the head? Yeah, I tried uh, several times to uh, uh, quit taking drugs. And it, you know, obviously, it was a very, very hard thing to do, but my uh, wife found this doctor, her name was Dr. Meg Patterson. I've heard of her, yes, she did, like a few rock stars. I That's right, Jimmy Page, Page, I've talked to Jimmy Page Townsend about her. Well. Townsend, Townsend, absolutely, yeah. Clapton. Clapton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, when I heard that, that, that she had helped all these guys, I, I figured, well, if, if she can help them, she can certainly help me, and, mm -hmm. and she did. Good, well, I'm, I'm pleased, otherwise, of course, we wouldn't be here no. this <laughs> afternoon, <laughs> on this sunny afternoon in Berners Street. All right. Um, most people, when they think of Thin Lizzy, they think of Phil, and he was the boss. Um, sure. Was he a good boss? <laughs> well, absolutely. Yeah. But uh, I don't think we, nobody, we didn't actually think of him as a boss. You know, I mean, he was, uh, he was definitely the, the absolute boss for the first few years. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to remember, Brian Robertson and myself, we had never recorded an album before. Uh, we'd never really been on tour before. Uh, and here was this guy standing in front of us saying, well, I'll show you how to do this stuff. I'll show you how to make an album. I'll show you how to write a better song. Uh, I'll show you what this whole thing called touring is. I'll teach you the music business. Right? 
And that's what he did. He was kind of like our, our mentor. And he showed us the way. He was the pathfinder. What, what, what was it brought, brought you to Britain? Well, originally it was uh, through my uh, uh, then brother-in-law, Bob Siebenberg. Uh, he was oh, playing with Super, Super Tramp. That's yeah, right. Yeah. He was playing with Super Tramp. And uh, he came to Los Angeles because he needed to go back to England to get his visa restamped. Right? Mm -hmm. But uh, he brought with him a, a cassette of the uh, of demos of the uh, the new album yeah. that they were going to do. Yeah. And uh, he says, "Yeah, you know, check this out. You know, listen to this." And I listened to it. I thought, "Oh man, this stuff is amazing." And he goes, yeah. "You know, I think I might be able to get you in the band." <laughs> oh, really? Oh, so, so that's... Yeah, so... You so, him, yeah, you found your brother. So yeah. I, I said, all right, oh, that sounds great to me. Mm -hmm. So I uh, I hustled and hustled and tried tried to, you know, do, do this job and that job and to try to work up money for a plane ticket. Mm -hmm. And it took me so long to get this damn plane ticket that mm -hmm. when I finally got to uh, England, the uh, super champ had already nailed down who was going to play what and what position and all that. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, but that's initially I, what, I, what I, I see. So you could have ended up in Super Trump. <laughs> I could have. I could have. If which, the cards had been dealt that yeah, way. Yeah, you know, and, and listen, they're, they're a really great band. And they, they wrote some uh, amazing songs. But uh, I, I look back on it now and I think, thank God I, that it didn't pan out for me. Yeah, that yeah. Uh, that I was able to take the path that I did. Because I really think in Super Trump I yeah. wouldn't have learned all that much. Yeah. The band's still going, you know, a, a version of, of, of Thin Lizzy is touring at the moment. What was the impetus behind regrouping? Um, well, to, to be quite honest, when, when we uh, first broke up in 1983, I really thought uh, what was going to happen was people will probably play the music for another five years, then you'd, you'll see a heavy drop off mm -hmm. and people will start to forget about the band and <clears throat> maybe every once in a while a radio station would play your song and that would be kind of it which is the natural way of uh, that happens to bands mm -hmm. right but uh it didn't happen that way it's the interest kept going and going and going and you know radio stations were playing it and people were writing articles about it and uh, john sykes one day gave me a call and said you know what do you think you know mm -hmm. about reforming and I flat out said no way you know Phil's not here obviously there's no way we yeah, can yeah, do yeah. this I don't I, in fact I, but I just don't want to know mm -hmm. and really it took about maybe four separate phone calls of uh, uh, from Sykes to you know kind of talk me into this thing because he, he was he had been in Japan and uh, he said I stuck three Thin Lizzy songs into the set mm -hmm. And the audience just tore the roof off, uh, and that I, I I was so surprised at that. I just I didn't know what to think about that. So, uh, so the idea was, we'll go to Japan, we'll play just seven shows, mm -hmm. and then shake hands and call it a day. Right? But uh, when we got back, uh, letters started to come in with the fan club and uh, phone calls. People were calling, "Why are you doing this in Japan?" We were the people over here supporting you all these years, yeah. and you go halfway across the world to do this. <laughs> so it was baby steps, you know. Okay, well, next year we'll do five shows over here. Yeah. And then the year after that, we'll do eight shows over there. Right? Yeah. And it wasn't until, I think, 1999 or 2000 that we decided to, well, let's give it a shot. Yeah. See what happens. Yeah. Do a bona fide Instead of just little isolated yeah, you know? bunches of dates. Yeah, yeah so... Yeah. Uh, it's it, it wasn't premeditated at, at all this it was just you just kind of fell into doing it and i had to admit that after not playing the songs for quite a number of years i uh, i was you know I, I realized how much i love playing the thing yeah. as songs so yeah. it was so an the, easy thing the, to the do audiences accept the fact that that, that phil's <laughs> not there that you don't get Banners saying we weren't Phil. <laughs> well, you know, there, no, no, no. There, lit it. Lit it. You know? <laughs> there's always going to be a, a, a percentage of people that are going to say uh, uh, no Phil, no Lizzie. And, yeah, and yeah, I yeah. get that. I understand that. You yeah. know, but you know, the, the idea was you come out and see the band to see the the music play live by uh, uh, as many original guys as we can put together, you know, and, and this is what it sounded like. And yeah, that kind and, of it, thing. and it's and it's it's 
And now it's a full-time proposition, really. The, well, the, the it, it is. The band or whatever you want to call it. Right? Well, we've yeah. kind of knocked it on the head a little bit here. Oh, we started this, the new band, uh, Black Star Riders, uh, which is uh, m mostly the guys in Thin Lizzy, just yeah. minus uh, Brian, Brian Downey right now. But uh, and that's what we're concentrating on right now is the Black Star Riders. And you've but got the different material that you perform yes. with them. Yeah, we've got a, uh, break a, into a new album. Thin it's Lizzie. called All Hell Breaks yeah, Loose. Yeah. That uh, is rather good. Well, it's 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 <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, you can run lots of different bands at the same time. It seems to be you know everybody has side projects nowadays, don't they? Well, we don't actually uh, uh, we don't actually consider this a side project. Yeah. This is uh, the, it's the real yeah. deal. Mm -hmm. But in saying that, because we've only got one album to to uh, draw off, we will be including. You'll we'll try in a few busy songs. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. and they'll probably go down a bomb. <laughs> Absolutely, I'm sure they will. Yeah, yeah. But I think people will expect that from yeah. us too. They, you know, they're not. I always thought that uh, I'll just go, going to go back to that thin lazy question now. That the, the the whiskey in the jar. Were you you, you played on that? No, no, you didn't play that. But no, that, that was Eric that, Bell. That was Eric Bell. Sorry, see, that's not in the my book. fault. That's now, good. see, if you would have read the book. Yeah, I should have done that. I read so many books. Um, <laughs> Actually, I edited the book. I should remember that. But that was a big hit. Uh, that was a first hit, and it, it was just a throwaway song, wasn't it? It was uh, a, a, a an Irish traditional yeah, song, yeah. Uh, and a lot of people still think it's the, the, the biggest song they ever had. Right? Well, but it's not. It's not. No. No way. No. No. I know, but it was just the first hit. And yeah. The fact that it was a throwaway song that they did in the film, like, whoa! Suddenly. Yeah. Out of the blue, it pushed the, gave the band a lot of momentum. It did. Anyway. It, that was the springboard. Yeah. Uh, it, it gave the name Thin Lizzy uh, no, uh, some weight. Got it now. You know. Yeah, got it now. Which is kind of kind of strange because it, it was a uh, like you said, it was almost like a folk song. There's no bass guitar on oh, yeah. it. You know, the drums are really light, right. and it became a, a, a good size. <laughs>